Hello, everyone. Welcome to Company Founding 101 Class 14. And it is sponsored by Sun Endowment. Today, we're going to look at the product development process. So first, we need to tackle what's the definition of such. The first definition is a series of steps that an organization go through from initial product concept through the market launch of the product. So these are the key stages of such. First is the ideation, which generates ideas in refining them. Because a lot of times when you come up with an idea, it's usually it's really rough and sometimes it cannot be put into reality. So now you gotta refine it to be more touch-based with the reality. Then you go through the design process to have detailed product plans and specifications. Now, after the designing such products, you go through a development phase. So you gotta start testing, building the prototypes and things like that. And then you go to testing stage, which is the iteration of your prototype. And then you go to launch your product, which includes like promotion and distribution. So why is this process important? And you gotta follow this process because it drives business growth by allowing companies to compete effectively. And also it navigates market changes to satisfy the customer expectations. A lot of times you come up with an idea that you already have a competitor in the market. How are you gonna beat the, uh, your predecessor that's already having a head start on you is by satisfying those customer expectations. So then we gotta talk about innovation strategies because it's, the ideas come from this. And the definition of innovation strategies is basically the plans and tactics that a company employs to encourage innovation and stay competitive in the market. So the examples of such have open innovation, which means collaborating with uh, external parties. For instance, if I'm a software company have X um, skill, and then I can collaborate with B company, B software company, they have another set of skills that we have uh, open innovation. Co-creation means creating with customers. So you listen to their feedback and innovate that into your model. Disruptive innovation is by creating new markets. I wanna focus on this because as we are gonna mention later about a case study with Steve Jobs, that Apple basically created new markets for you know, MacBook, app, uh, uh, MacBook, iPhone, iPad, and stuff like that. And sustaining innovation, which is improving on existing products, which Apple used as well, which we are gonna touch base on later. So the role of innovation is crucial to maintain a competitive edge on your competitors, of course, because if you your product is like just never changed, people change, their taste change, you know, technology change, there ought to be more, you know, more stuff that's coming out that's gonna beat you. And also here has an interesting concept that I don't know if you guys have heard this or not. Uh, a lot of, for example, shoe company design something too well to a point that they only need to buy one pair and they're done for like, they can just sustain for like 40 and 50 years. And of course that company shut down. To us, to the cu uh, customer, to us, that's a fantastic product, but it just didn't work because no one is just giving them more revenue after their first, you know, after buying their first shoes. So you gotta have spaces to improve upon. Now you gotta identify customer needs. Because if you identify a fake need in the market, your company is doomed to fail. And I don't want that to happen to any anybody. So of course, we're gonna have to touch base on the customer needs. How do we like identify that or something like that? So some methods to use is like market research. You can do surveys and stuff like that. Do customer interviews. So you can get a more sense of, you know, are we really touching on your need? The feedback analysis following that and listen to what the social media is saying, especially with the rapid social media growth. You know, a couple of days ago, the threads launched, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, all of Facebook, Twitter, all these types of social Instagram, uh, social medias are really useful for identifying customer needs because you see people complaining on there all the time. And you'd be like, oh, 
that is something that I have I can tackle, and that's an idea. Also, competitive analysis. For example, um, one of the prominent industries currently, oh, I mean, a couple of years ago, was the boba tea industry in China, and people saw that, and everyone just started open boba tea shops, and the results that resulted in that is just basically, you know, like all the companies started losing money because they're just way too competitive, this market. And only the big ones survive. So of course they can have, uh, they can undercut the price and they can survive longer because they're bigger and they have a higher gross profit margin. So a case study of identifying customer is basically Amazon's recommendation engine, which just effectively understanding and utilizing customer needs and preferences to enhance customer experiences and sales. So one of the funny stories that I've heard, I don't know if this is true or not, is that a guy who was um, the executive board on Amazon um, taking care of the a Asia district. And I think one time, his, one customer did not satisfy the need. So that customer sent an email to Jeff Bezos and Jeff Bezos um, basically just sent him a question mark, what's going on? And then he, like the customer feedback service is so good at Amazon and it enhances their experiences a lot. So when you, after identify a problem, you got to develop the solution. So the process of this is use the insights you gain from identifying customer needs to bring some solutions, creating prototypes, and get the feedbacks. And you refine the product based on this feedback. So repeat this process so you have a product that basically fulfills every dimension of the customer need. So the role of this is basically ensuring the product meets customers' needs and expectations is crucial for the success of the product in the market. So one example of this is the uh, is the Dyson Act games, which the company developed hundreds of prototypes based on customer feedbacks, and they came up with a vacuum that had the suction power the customer needed. We want to also manage the product life cycle. So the journey of a product from conception to withdrawal or new renewal, this life cycle is typically depicted as a bell curve which is a term that I'll touch on in the second series about these you know, terms that you, you, we usually use in the business world. And the stages of such starts from intro, uh, introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. So introduction starts with the product launch and growth is basically the sales increase, maturity sales peak, and decline sales uh, uh, decrease. So the management, so each stage of the product life cycle requires different strategies for production, marketing, pricing, and customer service. For instance, the introduction of stage requires like awareness building and the decline stage might require uh, cost cutting and product reinvention like iPhone 3 to iPhone 4 to 5 to 6 to 7. And you gotta have the continuous improvement in your product. And the definition of this is an ongoing effort that incrementally improves products, services, or process over time. And the role of this is that continuous improvements enhances efficiency and quality of your product. So example is definitely the lean management, which I believe I talked about a couple of lessons ago, which eliminates the waste of your, uh, if your product. So you have to bridge the innovation with improvement. So while continuous improvements enhances current offerings, innovation keeps the company forward looking and both are essential for long-term business success. And the encouraging culture fosters a really successful culture that encourages this creativity, experimentation, feedback, and iterate improvement. And the impact of this is basically merging the continuous improvement and innovation enhances the efficiency and success rate of the product development process. Now it's an important case study. The continuous product development is uh, let's say the iPhone, which is launched in 2007. It has multiple iterations with each new version, in, like incorporating the customer feedback over and over again and new technologies to meet the changing market. And also it opened up new needs as well. For example, like iPad, iPods, you know, AirPods and stuff like that. 
and every generation is just getting better and the innovation things is getting better and the branding is just fantastic you see like because of course the product is good we don't need to change our phone every year but people still do because all the people are like oh this is a new feature i want it and type of thing so apple is a genius at product management and development so some of the key takeaways of this lesson is should be the product development process includes multiple interconnected stages to form idea generation to the market launch. So you identify and meet customer needs is critical to product success. And managing the product life cycle ensures efficient use of resources and maximizes the profitability at each stage. So the continuous improvements is key to maintain product competitiveness, enhance the quality and meet the evolving customer needs. I'll end up with this old quote, believe you can be successful. And thank you so much for listening. Please email george.son at gmail.com for any question in potential partnerships. And yeah, see you next lesson.